it has been a hot minute since we have recorded a podcast. It was a pretty wild long winter and it's been an incredibly busy spring and so we haven't taken the time to hang out and chat fishing so we are back. Welcome to the Level Up Fishing Podcast. <laughs> I'm Stormy Cochran. And I'm Andy Cochran. We own GSO Fishing, and we are here to help you level up your fishing game. <laughs> so, it, like I said, it's been a while since we've talked fishing. And one topic that you taught on this winter was bass fishing for trout. Let's talk about that today. Yeah, so we put together a seminar for the ISC show in Salt Lake, and it's called Bass Fishing for Trout. And basically, it's just a it's a conceptual seminar, and we're kind of here to break that down, too, about using bass fishing techniques and lures to enhance your trout fishing experience. And so we'll talk a little bit about what the heck that even means here. Yeah, let's... Let's dig into that. Like, I remember when you first started teaching me some of this stuff and I was like, what? <laughs> it works, though. It definitely works. So dig into a little deeper of like, how did you even start coming up with this? Like, what's your background? So the basically the deal is, is bass are America's favorite game fish, right? The most popular sport fish, really, probably in the world. And... Because of that, there's tons of tackle companies that revolve their entire business around bass fishing. And so all the latest and greatest techniques and tackle tactics, electronics, everything that is made in the whole fishing industry is either geared around bass fishing or saltwater fishing. So the trout usually get pretty overlooked, but... There's so many cool lures and so many awesome rods and so much really great equipment out there designed for bass. But if you take a minute and really look at the design concepts, they make a whole lot of sense for trout too. So now are you saying you can just use any lure that you would use for bass for trout? So no, in a, <laughs> in a short answer, no, because physically bass are built different than a trout and so it all kind of revolves around their mouth or and or the type of cover that those fish inhabit so there's two main things that you have to work around when adapting bass stuff to trout stuff what made you even think about this like this isn't something that a lot of people are like yeah i'm just gonna go use a bass jig and catch a trout on it what made you think about this even to start so, like in Blue Mesa, for example, it is a crawdad-rich environment. And throughout bass fishing history, one of the most widely used and best lures across the board that catches bass are crawdad-imitating lures. Whether it's a crankbait or a tube or a jig, like a skirted bass jig with a trailer. And so... We started taking these craw imitators and it just made sense that, well, a bass eats a crawdad and a trout eats a crawdad. So let's use a bass jig that looks like a big crawdad and catch big trout with it. And the, the problem that we run into is that the bass stuff is so big. Mm -hmm. The profile, which what I mean by profile is like the overall like size of the lure sometimes isn't too out of line but the hooks themselves are much too big for a trout so that's actually why we started gso fishing the lure part yeah so <laughs> we kind of started with tube jigs um that was the main thing that was missing out there but what really motivated us to start creating our own lures was adapting these bass style lures into a trout environment and so we created what we call our finesse jigs which are themselves fantastic bass lures too but they are actually 
designed from the bass world and adapted to the trout world. When you first started throwing swim baits with paddle tails, I was like, well, well, yeah, no, I'm going to stick with my crankbait. And I did. I'm like, one, I'm one of those one trick ponies. Like <laughs> I, I get really, I dive deep into one lure and I stick there. But when you started throwing that years ago, and I watched you catch fish after fish after fish. I would, I'm competitive enough to know I'm like, dang, I got to switch up my game. <laughs> and so I started throwing it. And then we came out with the football head finesse jigs and the swim finesse jigs. And those were an even bigger game changer. Yeah, what we were going for with that was similar to bass. If you throw the... So both finesse jigs and all the skirted bass jigs are designed to use with a trailer. And so what we mean by a trailer is it's the plastic lure that goes on the hook with the skirted jig. And so if you throw the trailer by itself, whether it's a crawdad, a creature bait, or a swim bait, which you would use as a trailer on a skirted jig, if you just throw the trailer plastic lure by itself, you tend to catch a lot of fish. Yeah. If you get the skirted jig and add that same trailer to it, it enhances what's called the profile of the bait. Mm -hmm. It makes it bigger, bulkier, more alive. And a lot of times that is what we would do in a tournament situation if we're looking for our kicker fish. You know, one of the best big bass lures ever made was the old skirted jig, jig and pig, they call it, but a skirted jig with a trailer because it's a big meal focused on a big fish. Yeah. So we took that concept for trout and we just sized it down as far as the hook goes where it can easily fit in a trout's mouth. Uh, trout has overall a softer mouth than a bass so you don't need super heavy hooks to hold to stick them and hold them and typically trout are roaming open water so you don't need a big heavy hook to pull them from cover like you do a bass mm -hmm. so we went with a, a much lighter wire easy penetrating hook that doesn't require much of a hook set at all and you own them what we started seeing right away with that concept was that first year we had those out, Stormy caught like a seven pound brown on one. <laughs> and our soft plastics guy, Travis, who pours the trailers for those, our mud bugs and our PT swimmers, we fished a trout tournament together. And had I executed properly, we would have won that tournament too, strictly on those finesse jigs because they were getting us those much more quality bites so like i said i'm a one trick pony and so when i switched over to our swim finesse jigs that's like that's like what i use for trout that is pretty much all i use for trout i love fishing them in the spring i love fishing them in the fall my favorite favorite lure to catch trout on it and all of my biggest trout have been caught on those especially in the spring during the wind like when that wind kicks up and those mud lines get created from the water sloshing off the bank i have caught some outstanding brown trout on those and that kind of brings us to that sort of scenario and that's another thing that was brought in from the bass world that is jerk bait fishing yeah and during heavy wind or like off color dark times of the year, a jerk bait is a wonderful trout catching tool. But what we've seen the last several years is those swim finesse jigs have been out fishing the jerk bait like three or four to one. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic lure. So besides our swim finesse jigs, what are some other bass fishing techniques or methods that you can adapt to tr trout fishing? Um, so there's a bunch. So we kind of go through it in that seminar too, but there's, and I can just run through them and we can yeah. talk about it, pick on a couple, but there's the Ned rig is a really popular one um, that again got 
brought out of the bass fishing world. It took the tournament world by storm several years ago. Super finesse, drag the bottom type technique. That again, the only thing you really need to adapt is instead of buying big Ned rig heads that have big heavy hooks, you just get ones that have really small hooks. And then from there, uh, one of my favorite ones is topwater fishing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm a junkie for topwater, so anytime <laughs> that presents itself, I will take advantage of that. What, where, why, and how? Like, what made you think, I want to fish topwater for trout? Uh, so there's several scenarios that happen around here that really spark that bite off. And most of the time it has to do with either the stocking of fingerling trout or what we saw last summer was in the middle of the summer, the trout, especially in the evening, um, picking on the perch. And that yes. was a really fun one. And when you say picking on, they were doing it very particularly. So I believe trout have learned that when they eat a perch, they must eat it head first or they can get in trouble. So if they get a perch in their mouth sideways or backwards those those little spikes on them can get hung up and poke them and hurt them and so what our child have learned to do is they'll find these little schools of perch that are the size they want to eat like a two to four inch perch they'll find schools of those and kind of like a killer whale mentality they'll run through those schools of perch and head ram them slap them with their tail beat on them it's basically they're trying to stun them so that those perch can will stop moving so that they can get a good look at their position and eat them head first. So last summer we were hanging out in the evening and we saw several perch starting to float up to the top of the water. And all of a sudden we just started seeing giant boils right underneath them. You're like, yeah. those trout are hitting these perch underwater, stunning them to the point where they float to the top. And then they're coming up to the top and eating them. Yeah. So we dug through the tackle box and found a a really nice popper that was the right color. Yeah. It was like a two and a quarter inch popper, perch colored one. And, and why we had a popper in the trout box is beyond me, but we did. And literally first cast, threw it out there and caught like a five pound rainbow. <laughs> and it was like the most violent top water explosion ever. <laughs> Our whole crew went wild. It yeah, was great. So fun. And if you've ever been around a trout on a topwater bite, it's they strike with like at least three or four times the violence of a bass. Yeah, they crazy. absolutely destroy the topwater. Now, they don't always get it either. Yeah. They miss it way more than a bass does. And I don't know if that's because their mouth is smaller. What do you think? It's either their mouth is smaller or, you know, another scenario that happens is we get fingerling rainbows put in the lake every once in a while. And uh, at low light, these browns really like to school those things up and get them trapped in the shallows. And then they start blowing up on them. And just like you would see shad or anything else in a bass lake. And so my favorite lure to throw for that is a Lucky Craft Sammy. Mm -hmm. And it's a walking topwater bait. And so basically what that means is you work the bait the entire cast. You never let it rest. And so while it's going side to side across the top of the water, it mimics those rainbow minnows trying to flee perfectly. But I think it's a little hard for those trout to catch it. Yeah. And so they'll smack it, knock it around, and then four or five times later, they'll finally get one of the hooks <laughs> and he got them. But. And it's thrilling to watch because you're like, oh, man, he almost got it that time. <laughs> so what are some other techniques or lures? Uh, one of the other techniques that was, it's been a staple now in the bass game for a long time is the drop shot. Yes. And that's one of our favorite ones to use here for bass fishing and for, for bass fishing and trout fishing and perch fishing too. Yeah. And uh, the drop shot, if you're not familiar with it, basically you have a a weight tied at the end of your line. And then anywhere from like 8 to 16 inches above the weight, you have a little hook that's in line. Mm -hmm. So you can present a soft plastic bait on that little hook, basically weightless. 
where it suspends above the bottom and it creates a really really lifelike presentation um, without having any weight hook to it but you get all the castability and the feel of throwing a jig by having the weight at the end of your line and so it works really really good we actually use it in the river a lot because the drop shot weights are pretty snagless yeah. com compared to other styles of weights or even throwing a jig head. So anytime you've got a bottom that's really snaggy and you're hanging up jigs all the time or it's really mucky and you're getting green slime all over your jig if you're trying to fish near the bottom, the drop shot keeps all that, your lure that you want the fish to see above all that stuff right on the bottom. And one tip that I have, and it might not be true for all trout, but something we have noticed specifically for the trout around here in Colorado is they, they, they make so many different types of drop shot weights, right? Some are painted, some are not. So we've bought a lot of them because you lose them. You lose a lot of them. And one thing we noticed is that, um, they make like bright tan colored ones and the fish key in on that. And then suddenly the fish are trying to bite that weight instead of the lure above it. So we recommend getting either just the lead, the non-painted ones, or using a Sharpie or some nail polish and painting those a darker color that blends in with the water. Yeah, and I get that concept of those painted ones, and probably yeah. those tan ones would work if you're in a really sandy environment or something. Yeah. Because you do, yeah, those, because trout are oftentimes feeding on the bottom, picking up, you know, shrimp or little bugs, insects trying to hatch, whatever yeah. it is, they're always looking for stuff on the lake bed. So if they see your little round drop shot or cylinder drop shot, it might actually look like a bug or something to them so they'll try to eat it so yeah. if you can disguise your drop shot weight by blending it to the bottom that you're fishing that's a great tip so we kind of threw a bunch at them so let's do a recap what is bass fishing for trout so bass fishing for trout what it means to me and what we kind of figured with this whole concept was we need to take things that are innovative and very successful from the bass world and fix them so to speak to work for a trout and so you know if you're just talking overall the main thing you want to look at with any sort of lure that you're going to use for trout is size the hook down unless you're tube jig fishing for giant lake trout and then in that case you would actually size the hook up yeah uh the other thing is to pay attention to your equipment. We didn't touch on a whole lot of that, but with some of these techniques, again, if you're jig fishing for bass, you're using a pretty heavy, fast action rod to drive home a big hook. And with trout, we're not doing that. So your typical trout rods work really well, like a medium light, a medium, a moderate fast kind of action. Something that has more give because we're using smaller hooks. And then otherwise, it's just look at all those options that are out there. There's Everything is wide open. Just think about all the possibilities, like open your mind to the drop shot. How can that work for a trout? What kind of lure would I put on it? Well, trout really like to eat worms. They like to eat shrimp. They like to eat little minnows. There's soft plastic baits that imitate all of that that you could put on a drop shot hook. Um, the jig thing, again, that's one of our favorite ones and one of our most successful ones, whether it's imitating a crawdad or some sort of bait fish. But then jerk baits, crank baits, topwaters, so many incredible lures on the market that the paints nowadays, the finishes are super realistic. Trout have incredible eyesight, so... The way these lures have come over the years of being so realistic actually helps the trout guys out. Yeah. And so really the, at the end of the day, it's just think about all the possibilities that are out there that exist in the bass world. And you might have to do a couple tweaks with your equipment or your hooks. But 
it can open up a whole new world of trout fishing success. Well, and, and on that, you might have to do a couple of tweaks. So keep in mind, if you're buying topwater lures um, or jerkbaits, crankbaits, you might have to pare down the hook size on those, depending on the size of the fish you're targeting, the size of the trout you're targeting. Yep, absolutely. If you haven't yet, go to our website, check out our finesse jig lineup. The other thing is, on our drop shots, all we use are fin candy. That is it, the GSO fin candy. When we are drop shot fishing, no matter if it's perch or trout, we always use our fin candy. We love them because you don't have to change them out all the time. They're super durable. So go check those things out. www.gsofishing.com And thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Level Up Fishing Podcast. We will see you on the water.